Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to show you how you can bypass SSL pinning using production build device. Also it's quite easier to do this on a usual emulator since it's easier to get root access. It's quite common when you need to use production build device like emulator with Google Play Market or physical device for different purposes. SSL pinning is a security mechanism used by applications, in our case Android apps, to ensure secure communication with server. When SSL pinning successfully validates the server's certificate, the communication between application and server proceeds normally. However, if SSL pinning detects MITM attack, which stands for man in the middle, meaning someone is trying to intercept the traffic, the communication is blocked. All requests to and from server are rejected, and the interceptor cannot see any sensitive information contained in requests. This mechanism is commonly used by large applications like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, also, it may be used by smaller applications. Developers use this mechanism to prevent reverse engineers from easily accessing their traffic. For this video, we will use Twitter as an example, as it uses SSL pinning to protect its data. I will be using a production build device with Google Play Store, and I will install the latest version of Twitter directly from there. First, I will explain you how you can generally inspect apps traffic. There are various tools for these purposes like HTTP Toolkit, MATM Proxy, Burpsuit and others. For example, HTTP Toolkit is one of the easiest ones to use and to understand, but it is not the best option when the app uses SSL pinning. So we will use Burpsuit as it fits ideally for our situation. Now let's install Burpsuit. First, open your browser and search for Burpsuit Community Edition, then click the first result from the Force Figure website. On their side, you will see a button like Proceed to Download. Click it. Make sure to select Burp Suite Community Edition if you want the free version and choose your operating system. In my case, it's Windows. Wait for the download to finish, then install it like a regular program. Now we can open it. In the Community Edition, we only can create temporary projects, so leave the default option selected. Then choose Use Burp Defaults to start your first project. Later, you will also be able to load the saved project settings. Wait for it to initialize. Once the project is open, go to the proxy tab and then to the proxy settings sub tab to configure the listener. In the open window, click the existing proxy listener line and press the edit button. Now, change the binding option to specific address and select your IP address. This is the address that both Burp Suite and your emulator will use to communicate. Typically, your IP address is already listed in the available options. To confirm the correct IP, open the terminal and run the ipconfig command. Look for the IPv4 address. This is the one you need. Make sure this same IP is selected in the specific address option in Burp Suite. Next, go to the Request Handling tab and enable the Support Invisible Proxying option. This allows Burp Suite to capture requests from apps that don't send standard HTTP headers, which is often the case uh, with mobile traffic. Now your Burp Suite project is fully configured. To avoid repeating these steps every time, you can save the settings. Go to Project, Project Options, Save Project Options, and export the configuration as a JSON file with the name you like. Next time you launch the Burp Suite, you can select Load the From Configuration file to apply your saved settings automatically. Now let's create an emulator for testing. Open Android Studio and in the Device Manager menu choose Create Virtual Device. Since we are going to bypass SSL pinning on a production build device, choose a device which has the Google Play symbol in its line, which means that the app will have Google Play, so it's a production build. We will name it Test for clarity and keep the default system version. Wait for the device to set up. Now we need to set up a proxy on the emulator. For this, we need to proceed to the settings of the device and choose the proxy tab. However, in newer versions of Android Studio, the settings menu was changed and proxy settings were moved to another place. We will configure Android Studio to show settings in an old way, since it's much easier and more comfortable to get the proxy settings in that way. To proceed to Android Studio settings, go to File, Settings, write Emulator in the search bar, and remove the tick from Open in Running Device Tool window which will make the old view of emulator settings. After that, you will need to restart the emulator to make the updated settings come into force. And now, we can easily access proxy settings from the settings tab in the emulator settings. To set custom proxy settings, we need to remove the tick from Use Android Studio HTTP Proxy Settings and choose Manual Proxy Configuration. 
After that, we need to put the same AP and port as we were setting in Burp Suite. So now you can see that the Burp Suite and the emulator proxies and ports are the same. Now, if we proceed to internet on the emulator, Burp Suite will intercept requests. However, they will mostly be unsuccessful and you will see connection is not private message because we didn't configure the trust certificate yet. To configure the certificate, we go to proxy settings in Burp Suite and click import export CA certificate. Then choose the certificate in their format and select a convenient location and name of the file with .crt extension. Now we need to put a certificate on the device. For this, we write the command ADB push certificate location destination location. In our case, the location will be the SD card. Then go to the shell and proceed to the location where we put the certificate. Then write MV certificate slash download to easily find it on the device. Oops, slash on the other side. Write ls download to see the certificate is indeed there. Now proceed to the settings on the emulator security and privacy, more security and privacy, encryption and credentials, and install the certificate. CA certificate, install anyway, and find our certificate in the downloads folder. And now, when we proceed to the internet on the device, let's remove all the requests. We can see that the requests are fully visible and we can check the information about them. For our next step, we need root access. If we try to write the adb root command that would work on a emulator with usual setup, we will see denied access since we are using production build device. Now, if we go to shell and write who I am command, we will see that we are using shell level. And if we try to get SU, super user permission, we will also see denied requests. That's where Majesk will come in handy. To easily install and manage it, we will use the root AVD tool. To install it, go to a browser, write root AVD, and proceed to their official GitHub page. You can see that there is an installation guide present, so we proceed to the install Majesk section and follow these guidelines. We click to download it and wait for it to finish. After that, unpack it from the archive open command line and proceed to its directory. Now we need to search for the list avd command, in my case for Windows. After that, copy it and insert it in the command line. Don't forget you need to be in the directory of root avd folder. It will show the list of available devices and you need to find your one. You can do it by searching the details about your device in Android Studio. The test device I am showing has Android 36, so we can copy the first command for it and insert it in the command line. It will offer several ways of installation. The most stable one is the first one, so I'll just choose by pressing 1 on my keyboard. Then, wait for the whole process to finish and your device should shut down automatically in a few seconds. Then, launch it again by yourself. Now, you will see that a new application, Magisk, appeared on the device. It may require some additional steps, just follow them and wait for them to complete. And now, if we proceed to command line and insert adb root, we will still see the restricted access, because it's not the correct way of getting root in this case. We need to go to the shell, and if we write now who am I, we will see that we have shell permission. But now, if we try su command, we will see that Magisk asks for the permission, and after granting it, we will receive root access. If we write who am I now, we will see root. All the steps regarding root access we are done to prepare the environment for the next very powerful tool that we will use, Frida. To install it, you need to have a Python installed on your computer and uh, use pip command. Open terminal and write pip install Frida tools. In my case, it is already installed, but for you it will show logs of installation. To ensure Frida is installed correctly, we can type Frida version, and if it works correctly, it will show the current version. So in this way, Frida is installed on your computer, and now we need to install it also on the emulator. For this purpose, open browser and write Frida server. 
You will see Frida's official GitHub, proceed to it. And now you need to find the server for your Android ar architecture and version of Frida installed on your computer. In my case, it's Frida version 17.2.11, so I find it and open assets related to this version. Now search for the file with name Frida server. You will see that there are several of them for different architectures. Android emulators may use different architectures and to ensure we may write a db shell get prop row point product point cpu point abi command or an even easier way is just to go to android studio and check it in the device manager so we download our server for 8664 and then pack it now we need to push the server on the device to do that write in terminal command adb push location of free the server slash data slash local slash tmp then enter shell gain root permission and write command ch mode 755 slash data slash local slash tmp slash server file name and finally write comments dot slash data slash local slash tmp slash server file name to activate the server now the server is running and you should not touch this terminal window until your server is down to continue using a db commands for communication with the emulator, we create a new terminal window. First, we want to ensure that Frida works fine on the emulator. To ensure that, we write the basic Frida command Frida-ps-u, which will show all the processes running on this device if the server works fine. If not, go back to the video and ensure you've correctly followed each steps and especially check if you downloaded the correct Frida server file. Now, let's download the official Twitter app. I'll show you that I downloaded it from Google Play so that it is the unmodified official APK. Now, if we enter the app in a usual way and try to do anything with our burp shoot interception on, the app will not work and it will always show error because it can detect that our interception is on and it prevents it because of using SSL pinning. So you can see that when we try anything, there is immediately appearing an unsuccessful request log in our burp suite logcat. So that's why we need Frida, which allows us to rewrite the app's logic and launch it with modified logic. To use Frida, we need a script that we will launch, which will influence the app's logic. In this video, I will not explain Frida deeply, but basically we will need a script which will modify Java side logic of the app to prevent it from detecting SSL pinning. You can write scripts by yourself, of course, but for generic purposes, you can always search for already ready solutions. So we will do this in our case. To find the script, just simply write in Google free the script SSL pinning bypass and proceed to the one of the first links offered by official web free the website. You will see the full script. So you need to copy it in an any text editor. I'll use Visual Studio for comfort. We will need to modify one particular line of the code in this script, since we have a different certificate name. In script, it is cert-dare.crt, and I've saved my certificate with burpsuit.crt, so we need to correct that. After that, we save the script with any name and uh, GS extension, and simply follow steps described by author to launch it. First, we need to push our burp suit cert to the specific path so that Frida will be able to use it. To do so, we write command adb push certificate path slash data slash local slash tmp slash certificate name crt. And now we are ready to launch the Twitter with our Frida script. To do so, we need to write in terminal command Frida dash u dash f package name dash l and uh, script location. To find the app's package name, there are several ways. One of them is to decompile app and uh, search for its package name in the manifest. The second and easier way works if the application is published in Google Play, and we can simply find its package name there. We will do in the second way, so we simply write Twitter Google Play in Google and go to its official Google Play page. And now in the page address, we can see the package name which uh, will be after id equal part. In this case, it is com twitter android. Then we continue our terminal command by dash l and pass to free the script. And now you can see that Twitter started and we already see plenty of requests done by it. We can check all this information about these requests. 
We can also use the app normally so we can proceed to login process and the app will not show any errors. So we've successfully bypassed SSL pinning for Twitter application. Important note, when you've finished using the Frida script and want to close the application, to prevent any errors and crashes, you need to correctly finish Frida script execution. To do so, go to the terminal where Frida script is running, press Ctrl C and write exit and enter. In this way, the script's execution will be finished correctly and you can close the app fully. And one more thing to clarify. For some applications, it will not be enough to simply run the app with a generic SSL pinning bypass Frida script, because they may have improved SSL pinning protection and sometimes on the native libraries level. A good example is a Facebook app. If you launch it with the Frida script we've used, we will see that there are no successful requests to Facebook servers. They all went to logcat as errors. And we cannot use the app. In order to bypass this level of protection, you will need to write a specific script or even modify the native side logic of the app. But for majority of apps, especially simple ones, the steps we did will be fully enough to bypass SSL pinning. So that's it for this video. We successfully bypassed SSL pinning for Twitter application on a production build device using Magisk, Frida and Burpsuit. If you like this video, please put your like and subscription. And if you have any ideas or recommendations, put them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.